Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone based on where you are located. Uh, a quick intro about myself. Uh, I'm Praveen Dehadrai. Uh, I've been working since uh, 12 years on different modules of BMC Remedy. Uh, and from past three years, uh, I'm part of CMDP support team uh, working as a senior TSA. And our today's topic is CMDB, uh, mainly focusing on normalization and reconciliation. So we had our first session previously, so that focus was on introduction to the CMDB and introduction to the new configuration manager dashboard uh, console, uh, the new CMDB UI console as we call it, right? So in today's session, we'll take a quick overview of the CMDB, uh, how we are so uh, how we source the data uh, into the CMDB, how we process it further, and at, at the end, uh, what we get. So the complete data flow from start to end. Right. Then uh, during that process, we have few things as normalization, re reconciliation in between that help us to basically process that data. So at the end, we have a correct and uh, complete data uh, that other application can consume from the CMDB. So that overview we'll take first, then normalization. What is normalization? Why we need normalization? Uh, what are different components uh, involved within normalization? Backend forms, uh, how do we configure it? Uh, uh, these things we'll check, followed by a quick demo. Uh, then the reconciliation. What is reconciliation? Why do we need reconciliation? What happens within reconciliation in the back end? And what we get at the end of it? Uh, so that we will see uh, next, followed by another reconciliation demo. Uh, then some common issues, uh, basic troubleshooting steps, what you can check uh, to troubleshoot common issues. Uh, this is next we will see, followed by a, a Q&A session. So CMDB, right? So uh, the CMDB configuration management database basically it helps you manage, uh, store and manage your configuration items. Configuration items as in any any CI, right? Any hardware uh, CIs like servers, laptops, network devices, or any other softwares, operating system, uh, any other applications, and any relationship between them. So all these are CIs and their relationship and configuration management database help us uh, basically source that data, store it, uh, manipulate it as uh, per our, our organizational need, and at the end, uh, process it to uh, correct data so that this particular data uh, or CIs are then available to all other application uh, uh, that uses it, uses it. So this CMDB is basically central to the ITL process that involve maintaining and managing information about these thousands of pieces of hardware and software. So this data uh, in the CMDB basically feeds all other application within uh, ITL processes. So this mainly involves different components, right? So one of the component is, uh, for example, CS, right? As I said, uh, this is hardware or software CS like your laptops or desktops. Uh, and then it these CIs are stored in classes. So we follow this OOPS concept with the CIs are stored in classes. There is uh, inheritance through the uh, in these classes where attributes are uh, basically propagated to the different classes. And uh, these classes are basically uh, distributed based on CI types, right? So CI type can be of a computer system. So this, uh, this. Yeah, so uh this can be distributed or categorized in different classes like computer system uh, operating system uh, any of your products maybe you have ips associated with your computer so those will be within uh, uh, uh ip endpoints so there are different classes that are that are provided uh that that are provided uh, within the cmdb so this uh, data is stored in classes basically so when we say a class for example let's say a computer system right so any uh, ci that is coming through uh, that is coming through the uh, different sources of data right so in that case uh, we have different sources that is providing maybe a single ci or the same ci or related data to categorize it uh, properly or to manage it properly we basically divide it into data set so data set is nothing but a local or logical grouping of the data so at the end the data is maybe stored on a single uh, uh, database table 
but to manage it properly we are uh, distributing it uh, or categorizing it in different data sets so these data sets can be uh, your import data sets for example let's say you have different sources so you are, you have one laptop as a cr right you, so we, you have to enter it into the cmdb so you are doing it manually so that is that that should go to a particular data set so any manual entries that will go to a one cf you have another source let's say someone is uh, doing a bulk upload uh, so that can go to a different uh, data set you may have a, a bmc discovery or any third party discovery tool that is actually going and discovering that particular laptop and in that case uh, so that can go to a different data set. So all these are your source data sets where your so service providers or the data providers are allocated one data set each, right? So they can push their data into that data set. So when we have this data in the uh, source data set, that is a raw data, that is unprocessed data. Uh, if we use it as it is, uh, that's gonna mess up the things in other applications. So what we want at the end, uh, is one for us particular one CI there should be only single entry and that should be a correct entry right so then all these data sets we merge together and then we push that data to a production data set uh, we call it a golden data set basically so when the CI is finally available in the golden data set that is when it is available to all other application to consume so to do that right to manage this uh, data set, to correct the uh, attributes on that, to correct the data, to do the cleanup, and to merge these things. So we do have different uh, jobs basically that uh, help us uh, manage this particular data. So we'll we'll get uh, this uh, picture clarified in our next slides when we see the data flow. So this is how a basic data flow will look from start to end within CMDB. So for example. Uh, at the start, you have your, your IT environment here, right? So all your hardware, softwares, your servers, any other uh, configuration, configurable items are available here. Uh, the relationship between them is also there, right? So you may have a discovery tool, like for example, the BMC discovery. So it is discovering all these CIs and it is pushing it to the CMDB. So since it is uh, our own integrated product, so that integration is easier where BMC discovery directly push that data to an dedicated ADDM data set uh, in CMDB. Likewise, you may have uh, other discovery tool. You may have other uh, tools like SCCM as well or uh, BCM uh, or any other data provider which is helping you discover the data or CIs within your environment and providing it, providing it to us. So this data is then supplied to the BMC uh, CMDB with the help of uh, spoon jobs, integ uh, integrator jobs. Uh, so that pulls that data here through the integrator and push it to the uh, respective data sets. So, so at this stage, we have these different import data sets available where we have uh, CIs as an unprocessed data. So we may have a same single CI available in multiple data set with different values possibly, right? So then we pass that data to the normalization. So normalization basically will correct the data uh, the attribute and cleanup part, we'll see what normalization does uh, in our upcoming slides. Uh, once the data is normalized, then it goes through the reconciliation process where we combine the data and uh, from the different sources and that combined data or one final product that uh, about that CI, it goes into the, your production data set. That's when it is then available to all other applications uh, to consume from there. So normalization. So basically, when we say uh, there are different sources that is supplying us the data, right? There are different uh, data providers. Uh, providers. So there is a, a problem about uh, consistency about that data, right? So maybe the categorizer categories are inconsistent. Maybe the naming convention in the different uh, discovery tools is different, right? Uh, or when I am manually entering the entry for the CA, I might enter it differently. Uh, for example, uh, uh, if we have a Dell uh, Latitude laptop, right? Uh, so manufacturer, uh, I might enter it as a Dell Inc, right? Uh, when Discovery is discovering it, uh, it is discovering it as uh, Den, uh, Dell Incorporated. Or some other tool might send it as a Dell only, right? Uh, or some tools might have the categorization uh, done particularly. Let's say your uh, BCM is doing a categorization with a single category as a computing devices. Uh, but 
we have to align that uh, in our uh, system as per BMC remedy. What is our categorization uh, within our organization that we uh, uh, support? So that is a known categorization. So we have to align that uh, incoming CIs to a proper category uh, uh, so that it is consistent across all the data sets. So even though the our data providers are different, we have the data with the uh, correct values that are aligned with our product cat uh, catalogs basically. So with normalization, uh, we update uh, basically uh, the product, uh, it's categorization, CTI, category type item, maybe version number. We do have features to uh, update uh, the impact and uh, relationships as well. Yeah, so as we discussed, right, a, a simple example, for example, our data source one, right? It is uh, just don't take the fields literally. It's just an uh, theoretical example where let's say there is one data source. It is providing us a CI with uh, name, host name as Jendo laptop, model as something. Uh, a software is identified as MS Office Excel and version is 2016. So and another source is identifying the same CI with the model as uh, Apple Mac Pro uh, 15 inch maybe. Right, uh, but it is at the end is the same CI, all right, and the category might be different. So this version number is different. But when we normalize this this data, we want to have in both the data sets the categorization to be set correctly. So this product can be identified uh, or, or categorized in the same way in multiple data sets. So at the end of normalized data, we will have basically same categorization in both the data sets. So once the data is normalized like this, for example, here, uh, this software is changed to Microsoft Office Excel and the version is changed to 16. Uh, that is done in the so uh, both the uh, data sources basically. And once this data is normalized, that is then further provided to the reconciliation to process it uh, uh, further. Uh, any, any queries on this? Uh, or maybe we'll proceed with the demo. So, right. uh, Praveen, yeah. uh, just a query. So, is there? Uh, 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 th this is not version specific. Uh, social, right? uh, sorry to receiving? interrupt you. Uh, can we have the question answer session after the presentation, please? All right. Okay. Uh, for example, I have few sample uh, CIs uh, created in the system. For example, like this. Okay. Uh, this. I'll just set this so that we can use these CIs for the demo. All right. So, for example, BMC Discovery, right? So, it has discovered a product, uh, Dell uh, Latitude Laptop, right? Uh, it has sent us the serial number and some other attributes for this CI, uh, what it can identify based on that, right? So, it has done the categorization as well. So, if you can see here, uh, the item is missing here, the model is Dell. And if you have to check what's the categorization, uh, in our system, for example, right? So let me go here. So the correct uh, correct categorization for this uh, is this hardware uh, processing unit, laptop, uh, the product name is a uh, Dell Latitude and the manufacturer is Dell basically. So this is how the EDDM has provided, but that uh, model is incorrect. We don't have the item here, right? So this kind of data, our source uh, providers or the discovery tools can uh, send us. 
So this category that it has sent us is not aligning uh, with what we have in the actual product catalog, uh, catalog. So basically, whenever normalization will run, it will identify this category. It will try to see if it is a correct catalog available in the system, right? And if it is finding the correct match, at the end, it is basically saying that the normalization is completing or uh, with the successful with that CI. So if it find mismatches, there are inter intermediate steps uh, that we can configure basically. So it correct that data uh, based on those configurations. So in this case, it is a missing item here and incorrect model name. For example, another example here. So let's say SCCM has sent us the same CI it has scanned, uh, but that Categorization is different in SCCM. For example, it may be, uh, let's say it has categorized as a hardware, computer, and computer. It has sent us the model and uh, manufacturer name, right? So two kind of situations. One is like uh, incorrect data uh, in both, basically. So how we can uh, manage uh, such uh, uh, such data uh, and ask normalization to correct it. So before we run the normalization, uh, I should have some configuration in the system where I will guide normalization, how to identify what is the correct data for that, right? So let me go here. Okay, so we do have this form for uh, a normalization alias form, uh, proc name alias form. So what we are saying here, for example, right? I know uh, this discovery tool, for example, uh, uh, ADDM might send me this laptop detail as a latitude, or it might send me uh, it as a day latitude, right? So there are, might be multiple combinations that it can send. Uh, uh, same is for the manufacturer. Some sources might send it as a Dell, some might send it as a, Dell Incorporated or some might send it as a Dell Inc, right? So uh, I know there are possible combination that can happen with this. For example, let's say I'm, I know that uh, my source might send me a, uh, it as a latitude, right? So I'll add an entry at latitude and I'll compare or map it with the actual value, for example, uh, Dell latitude, right? So this is how we can uh, add the mapping for a model as well as same will happen for the manufacturer name. For manufacturer name also, maybe I'll map Dell Inc with the actual value as a Dell, right? So any any source, if it sends me uh, manufacturer as Dell Inc, I'll, I'm basically converting it to the uh, Dell by using this particular uh, form. So for model name, so I have already added these two mappings basically so whenever it sends me dell i know i only have dell latitude laptop so i'm just mapping it uh, as a dell latitude or uh, someone sends me as uh, some source sent it as an latitude then i'm just mapping it at a uh, actual value as a dell latitude uh, same goes for the manufacturer so i'm adding all the possible combinations for uh, manufacturer as well here right so this is one step that we can do and uh, normalization basically checks for uh, this uh, check this place uh, very first and try to correct the uh, product and manufacturer based on that it can go and search on the categorization like to which category that product is matching so once the product and manufacturer is matched in the product catalog it can pull that uh, category uh, from the product catalog right uh, for example, let's say I know another uh, uh, example uh, where uh, I know one particular source, let's say, uh, always sends me for any computer system, it always sends me one particular category. If I know such uh, uh, products, right? So there will be one particular category for software uh, CIs, uh, one particular category for hardware CIs, right? To make it easy, then what I can do is I can basically add a mapping uh, in the catalog mapping. Uh, in, in the tool where it matches that catalog, uh, catalog and it replaces uh, in the system with the actual values, right? Uh, we can do that from the CMDB console. Uh, we, we do have a backend form as well, but uh, that is also provided within uh, CMDB uh, uh, UI as well. So for that, you can connect to the CMDB console basically. And then uh, you go to the configuration normalization rule 
and catalog mapping. So this is basically a catalog allies mapping where uh, the entire catalog we can uh, map. So if I had to uh, map of the current category, right? For example, I know that for uh, the laptop, it is going to send me hardware, computer, computer, and Dell and uh, Dell latitude and Dell. So I can basically map it here, uh, selecting the class, and they can then I can add the values here that I see that the system is going to send me, and uh, then I can map it here. And in this, I will add whatever. Uh, details we will get from the source right the expected detail from the source we will basically add in the discovery product uh, categorization right and, and on the map product catalog basically we'll will add the actual category that we want to uh, set for the uh, cis so this is basically an additional type where we can basically map the categories if we are uh, aware of what possible categories can come here so for this particular one i had added like this so this computer Dell and Dell, this is uh, mapped to this. So these steps we are taking basically. So we are training normalization, uh, how to identify which CI uh, uh, categorization is matching with your our actual uh, categorization, right? So this uh, is an evolving process. Maybe uh, some customers do have that set very clearly. So this data is added basically, and sometimes we might find a new product uh, as we progress, right? And accordingly, such mappings can be uh, kept on uh, adding. So for this CA, so once this is set up basically, right? Uh, we do have alias and catalog mappings. Uh, then you can uh, go and configure your normalization job. So this is uh, you go to the CMDB uh, UI, new UI CMDB console jobs and normalization. So this is a pay page where you manage your normalization job. Uh, so basics of this are what are uh, places for this particular page. We have already seen in our uh, uh, previous session where this is a ribbon. Any other any job that is available will be uh, shown here. Uh, the total job, whatever we have executed based on the timeline that we select here will be appearing here. And if whatever is we are processing, will start showing the results here. Okay. So let me let me create a, a normalization job, for example, this. So I have first example for ADDM, right? So the normalization job we will be basically writing for a data set. Right? So for this uh, data set, my job would be like this. So let's say. I can give any name for this job. Then I have to select the data set for which I want to run this uh, normalization, right? Uh, then there are additional options that I can select. For example, allow new product catalog, right? So what when this normalization job will run, right? It's gonna check. It's gonna do the alias mapping, compare the alias mapping, correct the uh, uh, product and manufacturer. It's gonna maybe correct based on the catalog mapping we have added. And at the end, if it is finding with that replaced values, right? If it is finding that uh, product catalog in the correct product catalog, it's going to replace those values and it's going to set the normalization to more normalization done, uh, uh, the normalization successfully, right? So with this, uh, if uh, we might get a new product catalog as well, right? So that is not matching. So in that case, the normalization is going to fail for that particular CI. So there is an option that in case you trust the source, you know that this source is going to always send me uh, the correct categorization, even if that categorization is not available in remedy. Uh, but whatever categorization, new com categorization coming through the source, if I trust that, I, I can set this value, particular value, where allow new product catalog entries. So normalization can go and create those product uh, catalog entries as well and then uh, mark this uh, normalization as mar a normalization done basically. Then you have different features, uh, normalization features uh, that we can uh, use. So not only the correction of the CTR category type item, right? So there are different features, uh, additional features that are provided with normalization. For example, if I go to the configuration, normalization and features, right? So. Uh, these options are provided with the normalization that we can use within the job. For example, version rollup, right? So 
for example, for a software, right? Uh, or let's take an uh, BMZ uh, Helix application, right? So for our internal version, right? Let's say it's 21.3.0.7. And let's say if there is a new patch coming in, it, it can be a, a patch eight, which is added to the version number again. So with every maintenance or every, every patch, that particular actual version number for the product might get changed, right? But for the customers, for the market, right? The version always stays the same for, for us. For example, we call it uh, BMZ Helix 21.3, right? So if we want to do it that way, right? So internally patching can change. And why we want to do that? To manage the licenses better, right? Even some customer might be on patch six, someone somewhere, some customers will be on patch seven, but at the end we are licensing them as the same, right? Uh, whatever licensing applies for 21.3 version. So any such products with different patches, we maybe we call it or uh, in a same version as a market version. So if we have such requirements, we can uh, this version rollup can help us uh, do that. There are uh, some rules provided, or we can create our rules uh, as well. For example, let me I can create a rule for BMC uh, product, right? So uh, the product name can be uh, BMC Helix. Uh, uh, ITSM uh, manufacturer BMC market version would be BMC Helix Remedy 21.3 and in the qualification I'll add the qualification as product uh, a product basically matching with anything with 21 dot percent right so anything that contains 21 in the product name will be part of uh, BMC Helix to, uh, to, uh, 21.3 basically or something like that so we can uh, uh, update this market version by using uh, this feature then we have suit roll up so some products right so our uh, cmdb is helping us disco uh, get and manage cis right so uh, we do have some products in the suit like itsm suit right or microsoft office suit right so when a ci is discovered let's say uh, it is discovering uh, on a particular computer it is discovering microsoft word it is also discovering microsoft excel right so uh, it should not mark them as a different products rather it can be marked as a single uh, microsoft office suit so that such definitions uh, we can configure in the suit roll up uh, you we have role level security as well so when the ci is created uh, uh, it, it has a role level security it means whatever permission that are allocated to that particular ci only those groups or people can access the cis right so let's say you have a, a, a ci coming from a uh, uh, external source. Let's say you have a different team working for Dell laptops. You have a different team working for HP laptops. Maybe based on the product, right? If, or manufacturer. Let's say if the uh, manufacturer is Dell. You want to give the permission to the Dell team, uh, Dell support team, uh, for that particular CI to do anything on that one. Or if the product or manufacturer is HP, then you want to uh, give a permission to a HP support group basically on that particular CI to do anything around or if they own that particular product accordingly you can change that uh, your permissions for those users that that can be done with the uh, row level security so basically if you have to add such qualifications you basically map this right you add a rule uh, you add a precedence you add a class name for which class you want to do and you add a condition right a qualifier basically so wherever this particular qualification will match it will add the permission that you selected on that particular uh, CI. So uh, in CMD we do we have CIs right. We also maintain a relationship between the CIs right. So when we maintain the relationship, we have a particular namings uh, for different types of relationship. A particular hardware or a computer uh, related to an IP right may have an uh, hosted access point as a relationship type. Uh, you may have um, uh, your server related to the database with a particular relationship type right to have a standardized naming for those relationship right so that cannot be maintained when you have a different sources providing you this data right so in that case uh, you want to standardize let's say you have a uh, source system as a computer system uh, destination system as a uh, an uh, operating system and based on that you want to add a, a relationship name when there is a relationship between or such relationship between those cs you want to name it particularly right? let's say uh, uh, application system service for example right so that relationship name corrections uh, we can do with the normalization by adding the rules uh, in this one uh, 
then we have impact that is again this is again applies to the relationship classes uh, where uh, uh, previous right uh, in our older version we used to have a bmc impact as a separate class now that is managed on the relationship itself that particular uh, uh, ci relationship itself where we have impact related fees for example maybe a computer system has an impact on an ip it has an impact on a uh, application right uh, between that so we can set that has impact uh, attribute for that particular ci we may set the direction for the impact so those impact related fields we can uh, set on a particular relationship based on the uh, condition so there are different qualifications here we can add we can select the class uh, for which class we can give us uh, we can filter it with a specific qualification and we add uh, a source class destination class with a, again with a specific qualification as well we can add uh, for example computer system would be the class uh, let's say database system would be the class and then we can set it as an has impact and the impact uh, direction as well so when we set that and when we normalizes it will update those uh, relationship record uh, on the relationships uh, if the provided features are not sufficient me the so if you have a business requirement that is different like on certain particular condition uh, you want to set few attributes matching that attributes right so that can be fulfilled with the uh, custom rule basically so it basically checks the qualifier for that particular class and whatever attributes that you are setting matching that qualification uh, it uh, you can uh, basically add that here so you add the rule group class name qualifier uh, you add the actions and then you add the attributes basically here so this is different features of uh, uh, normalization in addition to the normal categorization uh, corrections uh, we can do basically so <clears throat> now i'm back to this create normalization job page where we are creating a simple job normalization job provided a job name basically uh this particular flag check means the, if the product is approved or not in the category so you can still normalize it uh if, with the unapproved product as well uh, so only it will set the status as normalized but not approved and if it is an approved product it will set it as normalized and approved right then on your job right so for example addm so addm is syncing its data let's say every day at 12 am right so it it goes on for let's say two hours so you can uh, you can schedule your job accordingly so post your addm sync you can basically configure this job so it can be done daily monthly weekly or it can be a continuous job right so you can add such schedule for now i'll just add it for sunday and i'll save it so th this job will run basically as per the uh, schedule right then uh we also have another example right so that ci is in uh bcm where we have an incorrect so i we will also need a, a normalization job for uh sccm as well so i'll quickly create that job too sccm will keep other option as it is and I'll save this. So now I had done the backend configuration as well. I have the jobs now ready, right? And I have these CIs provided by the sources. So this CI is provided by uh, ADDM source. This CI is provided by the uh, SCCM source, right? So if I now, let's say, run this job, So this SCCM job is completed, OK? So if I refresh this, right? So what it has done, basically, it has corrected the categorization. So whatever categorization which was sent by the SCCM, it has replaced it with the actual categorization which is available uh, in our product catalog, right? So basically, this CI and this CI is same, but that is provided by a different sources, right? So we'll also normalize this other uh, CI. So this is also completed. Here it shows us the successful CIs. It shows us failed CIs. If a CI is failed, for example, right? So 
uh, you can click on this. It will also show you which one has failed, which C has failed and why it has failed with the reason, right? So it could not find a unique uh, entry for the product catalog. That's why it was it was failed. So in this, yeah, so we had normalized SCCM. So this was our ADDM CI, right? So if I refresh this, so this is also again normalized. So we do have two different CIs. The short description is, let's say, for example, different. Uh, uh, the serial number is same, uh, but and categorization were different earlier. And now post normalization, uh, this is normalized. So this is a quick demo on how we use the normalization jobs basically uh, in normalization you can run the normalization at the data set level you have this you can configure it at uh, data set configurations right if you want to keep the normalization as inline right uh, which features you want to use on that data set uh, such conf this configuration is available in the data set configuration uh, the features part we have seen uh, the catalog mapping we have seen class configurations basically uh, you in the class configuration by default whatever classes we have provided with the product uh, these are added here uh, if there is a requirement let's say you don't want uh, to normalize an application system class for example uh, so you you can remove this into from this class configuration so whatever classes available in the class configuration it is it will it is going to normalize those classes only so if you have a custom class uh, created by the user that is not normalizing, so you should come here and add that in the uh, class configuration basically. So and that class will then get considered for the normalization during that data set normalization. going back to the presentation so a quick summary basically right so what we have seen in the demo right so whenever the ci first comes right so it basically checks the normalization allies first right uh, if, the, uh, if it has a product or manufacturer there uh, then it checks the catalog allies mapping then it goes for apply version rollup rules then it checks uh, the product in the product catalog using model and manufacturer it, if the ci also has populated market version on that particular ci it also checks for that same way it will check for version number and patch numbers if they are populated on the particular ci right so if this has a match in the product catalog then it goes to the match found then it check when the product catalog is found in the catalog it checks whether that applies to the company which is selected on the ci or if that rule is applying to the or that catalog is applicable to the global if it has that uh, then it checks if is that a approved product right so if the product is uh, approved and it also find uh, the match as well right so at then it is gonna uh, mark that ci as normalized and uh, approved if this uh, is not an uh, if that is uh, not an approved product right then it checks for this allow unapproved right so this was a flag on our job allow unapproved cis right uh, if it is yes then it will mark the ci as normalized and then not approved basically so if it is not checked then all these flows come to here which is not match then there was another option on our job right so if there is no match found uh, uh, in the, this case so it checks if it is allow new product catalog option is checked on the job if it is checked then it goes and basically create the product uh, with the matching information right uh, so but uh, we should be cautious about using this uh, we don't want to create the junks in our product catalog so this should only be used when you fully trust the source uh, or, or data source provider uh, in for example ADDM so we know that the ADDM might provide us all the categorization correctly for example so we can set it uh, this allow product new new product catalog options for that particular data set right so if even if this option is not selected at the end then uh, this uh, CI is marked as not normalized or normalization failed basically so this is the overall for, flow for the normalization Then once the data is normalized, right, then it goes to the reconciliation process. So, uh, so the reconciliation basically performs, uh, or basically it 
it combines that data, right? So we have seen that the CI was same, right? So our different sources can enter the data into different uh, data sets. So manual entry went into a different data set. When we did a bulk upload, if the same CI is part of that bulk upload, it is going to a different data set. When discovery is discovering, it is going to a third data set. Let's say ADM discovery. Uh, when the SSM is discovering, it is going to a fourth data set. So we may have three, four, five entries based on different sources. So for a same CI, we have an entry in multiple data sets. So if that goes directly to the, your production data set, then your application stuff will start seeing duplicate entries for the same CI. We don't want to do that. So what we want is at the end when the reconciliation runs, what reconciliation does, it identifies which is a same CI in different data sets. And it merges it, it combines it, it, and a final version of a CI is sent to the golden data set. So identifying the CIs and then merging them into a single CI is uh, these are the two primary activities for the uh, reconciliation. There are other activities as well. Uh, you know, like we can do copy, we can do compare, we can do purge of uh, any soap deleted CIs, right? We can delete them. We also have a delete activity which actually hard deletes the uh, CIs from the uh, system. So this is a reconciliation. It's basically merging of uh, on uh, data and having a final version of the uh, CI available for all other application. In same example, right, as we have seen previously. So we we have here a source coming from one so, uh, same CI coming through the second data source. We had normalized that data right through the normalization and then we have a uh, final right. So this particular star is basically representing precedence. So when we have different sources, right? So you you may say that let's say a laptop is discovered. I know that the serial number will always be correct if the data is sent through the uh, SCCM. I know if let's say uh, if a CI is sent through the SCCM, I know it is going to send me the correct site location for that particular CI. Uh, but these two sources maybe is not sending me the correct owner for that CI. That laptop is uh, assigned to whom, right? So maybe I have another IT team which manually enters this particular data. I want to uh, trust that whenever uh, owner is filled on that particular uh, computer, right? So I want to, let's say that manual entry, I want to give higher precedence, right? So for which attribute you want to give higher precedence from which data set is basically defined in precedence and accordingly it picks that value uh, and you prioritize that value which attributes to pick from which uh, data set. For ex in this example, like host name, it has like two star meaning higher precedence compared to this name. Then, uh, then it has model here in the first data source with two uh, as a higher value in the precedence, uh, we, which is less here in this data set. And software and version has a higher uh, values uh, of precedence in the uh, uh, below. Uh, be, um, below data source basically, right? So when we reconcile this data, we will at the end have one single CI and that CI will have a correct categorization. That CI will have some attributes from this source, for example, host and model here, right? So this is picked from this based on the higher precedence, right? So host name and model we I picked from here and then uh, software and the version I picked from this another data source, right? And finally, I have a complete CI with all the fields from different data sources and as a single entry, uh, which other application will consume as a single entry there. Right? All right, so. <laughs> a quick demo on the reconciliation, basically, so what we Earlier, so right, uh, we have the sources. For example, this ADDM had sent me this data. SCCM had sent me another CI, right? So these two are uh, available in source CI. I had also created one manual. So if I refresh this, for example, right? So this is an CI entry with serial number this, right? And all these three CIs. So one is manually created entry. One came through the ADDM. One came through the SCCM. All these three CIs are basically the same CI. Right, but these are only in the source data set currently. 
right? Import data sets. So this is in BMC sandbox. This is in ADDM. This is in SCCM. So this CI is not available for all other applications because it is not available in the golden data set yet, right? So for example, for this data set, we also have the reconciliation job. So re what reconciliation will do? Basically, it reconcile that data from source to the final uh, golden data set, which is bmc.asset. BMC asset is our uh, golden data set. So it will uh, basically reconcile that data. To do that, uh, so for example, I I'll go to the CMDB UI again under reconciliation jobs, right? So I have here the sandbox job. So this is an out of box provided job, for example, here. So I do have a CA in sandbox. So if I run this uh, job, right? So I'll, I'll show what are parameters for this job, but if as it is, if I run this particular job, right? So what it is going to do is at the end. <clears throat> so it has created an another fourth entry, right? You see in the BMC asset. So you see the serial number and everything is same. It has pulled the data uh, like whatever was short description manual here. It has pulled that data on the asset record as well. Serial number categorization and every other field that is available there on that uh, CI is it, it has created. So this is now available in the asset basically. So this CI is basically reconciled through from the asset, right? Then you say uh, the same CI is also discovered by the ADDM again, right? So to reconcile the CIs from ADDM and SSM, we also need the jobs for those particular data sets. So this job is not available uh, here. So let me create here, for example, for ADDM, I'm, I'll, I'll create one job. So you provide the name, you provide some description to the job. Uh, you toggle this to the active, right? And you select some parameters here, yes, right? Whatever provided. For example, process normalized CIs only. So what this parameter does in the previous step, if the CI is normalized, then only it will consider for normal uh, reconciliation, right? If you want to keep that option that way, then you can check this. Otherwise, you want to reconcile all the CIs um, irrespective of whether it is normalized or not. You can uh, uncheck this. A delete file on exit. So each run, right? Every time you run a reconciliation, it generates some files basically. Uh, and if there are any uh, empty files, zero KB files generated, it's going to delete at the end of that particular job. Uh, then you can exclude orphan weak CIs. So this particular, right? What is orphan weak CIs? We, we might cover it later on, uh, but you can uh, basically exclude this uh, often CS through this, right? Then you uh, by with the product, right? So what rules you want to use for this particular reconciliation? So you, how you will identify a CI, what values to pick, right? So there are uh, out of box rules provided with the product. If you want to use those standard rules, we can check this box, or if you want to completely make our custom rules, uh, we can uncheck this and add our custom rules and the job will use those rules. So we'll use the standard rules here. Uh, this tool is basically uh, uh, this uh, disable progress. So when the job is running, it shows you the progress uh, uh, on the previous screen. When we see the run history, uh, it will show a particular bar there, uh, how the CA, uh, reconciliation is progressing. This is about retain all job history. So every time a job will run any CI as it processed, uh, it's going to maintain each job run history. You can limit this. You, if you uncheck this, it will ask you number how much uh, last run you move, you want to check. Let's say I can set it to the 10 or anything. So it will return the last 10 run histories only. Then we add the activities here, right? So we have different activities. Identify, merge, purge, execute, copy, compare, delete, right? So these are the reconciliation activities, different activities uh, that we have. So we have to use from these activities. So the first one is identify. Basically, when there are multiple sources, I first want to identify my CI, right? So this is these two CIs are same, right? So when it identifies that these two CIs are same, it allocate them a common reconciliation identity, right? So when the same recon ID is allocated, uh, then based on that, it process it further. So first is identify. So I want to give the name to the activity, I'll keep it as it is. Uh, a sequence, then status. Do we want to, if that job has an error, do you want to can still continue to the next 
or pause it there, right? So these things you can add. Then I'll select the source data set, right? So for each data set, you want to add a, a, a reconciliation activity. Basically, you can have a same activity doing uh, the identification from both data two day two or more data sets as well. But we don't usually recommend that. It's always better to have a, a single uh, source in a, each activity. So our source data set is ADDM. Our target data is uh, data set is uh, BMC asset, right? So I've added here. Let's say generate IDs. We'll see these options again. A qualification. I'm not doing anything. Use all classes and all instances, right? I can keep this job job as a continuous, so that will run at a predefined uh, interval that can be configured through the core configuration, or I can add a schedule on this as well, right? So if you add a schedule, it, it will ask you the details like this. So for now, I'm not adding uh, any schedule here and I'll add another activity, right? So identification is done. First thing is identifying CIs from different sources, right? Then I want, once it is identified, the next stage I want to do is merge those two data sets, right? So first thing from my DDM data set, I identified it in the merge, merge activity. I'm going to merge those CIs, right? So I'm keeping the name like this sequence like this enable continue on error i want to select the data set so addm is my uh, source data set right and target is always production data set so i want to move once the ci is reconciled i want to move it to the asset right then i will use the qualification like this we are using the standard rules so that's why it's it has picked the default it's not asking me for the uh, precedence set uh, we'll cover the precedence set quickly again. So I'm just saving this job. Uh, I'm, I'll quickly also add a job for SCCM as well. Add activity, identify, select source as SCCM. Generate IDs, save. Okay, I missed adding um, merge activity as well. So I want to merge as well. So merge activity, sequence, CCM. Yeah, I want to merge it to the production data set, PMC asset. Save. So I have these two sources, uh, two jobs configured now, right? So earlier we have seen this example, right? So when we ran the reconciliation, sandbox record got created into BMC asset, right? It created a, a asset record. And why we say these are two uh, same assets? Be uh, because it has a same recon identity here, right? So it will have a same number, right? So now I'll I'll run a recon job for ADDM. So we had created this ADDM job. I'll do a start job. So it says it's completed. It process one CI, right? And then I go here and if I refresh this, right? So I can see ADDM is merged, but it has not generated any new record. It identified it as a same CI, which is available in asset, and it allocated same ID, whatever ID was for BMC asset, it allocated it to the ADDM data set here, right? It updated that. So if you see, uh, it had picked the values, some values from BMC asset and some values from ADDM as well. So we'll cover how that it is doing that, right? So the next is, uh, let me also run the, uh, the SSCM job that we have created. So I'm going to start this, run this. So I see the SSCM is job completed. It has processed one CI. And if I go back to my base element form, if I refresh, so I see the SSCM is also reconciled because it has, earlier it was zero. Uh, it has now allocated the recon ID, same recon ID which was there for the asset. So first thing, so if 
if there was no record, right? So if I had run this BMC asset, so it created one record here, right? But it did not create another record when I ran a, a reconciliation for ADDM or HCCM, right? It allocated the same ID. So basically it identified whatever CI is available in production, right? Golden data set. It is the same CI in this HCCM as well as ADDM as well as asset sandbox. So in all these CIs, it allocated same recon ID, right? Because if I do a search based on recon ID, I get this four records here, right? This is the final production data set, BMC asset, which is available to other applications. And all these CIs are. So it did not create a new interest for each of the CI, but it basically merged those CIs into one. So how it identified uh, the CI in the ADDM is exactly the same, which was in the set. Uh, sandbox uh, and when it did for SCCM, it identified it is the same CI which was there uh, in the uh, asset, right? So how it check it is the same CI, right? So we can go back to our job. So for example, ADDM, right? So when the ADDM reconciliation was running, so we do have this uh, uh, identify activity here, right? So if you go here, source data set, right? And if you check this rule, uh, in front of this, uh, source data set ADDM, right? So it will list me all the rules for the classes or the qualifications for the classes based on which it is comparing uh, which is my CI. For example, we were doing our CI was of type computer system, right? So I'll check the rules for the computer system. So it is currently using standard rule because our job is a standard and we are using out of box provided standard rules here, right? So what it does is it picks right through the priority. It will start from first to the fifth, right? Based on whatever number of uh, rules are configured. So it is comparing this qualification. So it is comparing. So it is what it is comparing. It is comparing this current CI. For example, if I'm reconciling ADDM, right? So it's comparing whatever value are available on this CI and it is comparing it against the BMC asset, right? So it is comparing whether that token number matches is not equal to zero if it's not null and also token number is matching with the token number from the current uh, record. Is it matching? So in for example, in our case, uh, token ID is zero for example here, right? In our case, so this qualification failed for us. So then uh, this is not matching, right? So then it goes to the next qualification. It will then compare all those fields which are configured here, like whether domain name is not equal to null and domain equal to domain, uh, host name not equal to null, host name equal to host name like this. It will compare all the qualification, right? If it is not matching, it will again go to the next, right? If it is matching, as soon as it find match in any one of these priority rules, right? It's gonna pick that reconciliation identity from the so from the target data set, right? So it, let's say it find match with a third rule right so it find it find this bmc asset record right so it will pick this reconciliation identity and it will assign that same reconciliation identity to this record which is in addm based on those rules like how we identify right so it's it's not going to create that record if there is a match found it, it's going to pick that recon id from asset and allocate it to the addm that is the reason we don't have a new entry created when we run the job for ADDM and SACM. So let's say it goes to the third rule. If it finds a match, it's going to pick that recon ID and use that. But let's say another use scenario, right? It goes to the fourth. It, uh, if the third rule is a uh, third qualification is also failing, it's not finding any match. It goes to the fourth. It's not finding any match. Then it will go to the fifth. And if it still doesn't find the match with the last rule as well, right? In that case, it's gonna generate a new reconciliation ID and it's gonna allocate that new reconciliation ID to the your source record, your ADDM record, right? If it find the match, it will allocate from the uh, target. If it doesn't find, it will allocate a new ID, right? So what happens with this, right? Then we have our next merge activity. What this does, a it will just check wherever there is a, a matching recon ID in different data sets. It's going to merge it into a single asset, target data set basically, uh, with the same ID, right? Whatever is ID. If the ID is already present in BMC asset, it's going to update the same record. Uh, 
uh, if the ID is not present, it's going to create that record, right? So that is the reason first time when we run it for asset sandbox, there was no record, so it created it. But for ADDM and CCM, it just updated those uh, records, right? So uh, this is how it basically works. And so these are out of box provided rule, right? These ID rules, what we see here are out of box provided rules, standard rules. So customer uh, may have a requirement or your organizational uh, uh, requirements are not fulfilling with this requ these requirements, right? So you can uh, anytime create your own custom rules, right? So you go to the configuration, manage reconciliation rule, ID rules, right? So then you can add your custom rules here, uh, what you need. So you can prepare your own qualification and add a rule like that, right? Let's say I'll add a new add rule set here through this and I'll create a rule set. I'll add the qualification to it and on the job right so now our job was basically using uh, a use standard rule as yes right so in that case you need to select use standard rule no if it is already selected through the console you cannot change it you need to create a new job if it is already set to yes and if you have to change it to the no so basically you will disable this job and you will create another uh, job with standard rule as no and you will select so when you will click here you will basically see the list of custom rules that you have created and those will be used with your custom job. So it's a custom job using custom rules in that case. Right. So second thing was so the first thing we identified like why it identified all these CIs as a same CI, right? So that that's the part we have seen and based on ID rule, uh, it completed that. But if you observe this CI, for example, uh, asset, right? So this is a final asset, right? If you see it has the same all these three CIs had the same name and same categorization, right? But the description was different, right? So Sandbox has a description as manual. It has a site as Hong Kong and it has a, uh, a tag, for example, right? CI tag as a Sandbox, right? But if you go to the ADDM, ADDM has a tag as CI tag ADDM. Description is different. It has a same site, Hong Kong, right? But other, other, field, other two fields were different there. Then if you go to the SCCM, you have a description as SCCM, tag as SCCM, and site is Pune, or sorry, Bangalore, right, within this. So these three has some different attributes, right? Some are common, some are different, right? And if you check the final data set, for example, this BMC asset, right? So what we see on this, so the common attributes like name or categorization, which was same on all the three CIs, which is same, but the description it has picked from the SCCM. Right. Earlier it was from Sandbox. Now it has picked it from the SCCM. Right. If you check the owner name, right, it is Vizoshi, right? So it is from this Sandbox. In ADDM it is blank. In SCCM it was P D E H A D R A, right? But it has picked the owner name from uh, basically from the Sandbox, right? So this value, owner name it picked from the Sandbox manual one. Uh, the tag right the tag it has picked from the addm right to so ci tag it has checked from addm and the site details it has picked from the sccm so you see this final ci is basically the combination of attributes from all these three right so as i said earlier right maybe i trust the manual update when i'm updating the uh, owner name so that's why uh, i want to keep this higher uh, keep this as a higher precedence when I, uh, we are comparing the data for owner name. Uh, let's say I know that ADDM is always going to send me the correct tag. So that's why I had given a higher precedence to the CI tag. Same way SCCM. So I know that SCCM is going to give me the correct description and the correct site. So I had given a higher precedence to these values for the SCCM. So finally, when I got this CI, it's one CI for all these three data sets with all the prioritize or pre higher precedence values from different CIs. It's a combination of all these three as a one final CA, right? So how it decided, right, uh, whether how to pick the owner name, where from where to pick the owner name, uh, whether to pick the owner name from Sandbox, or pick the tag from uh, ADDM and sites from SCCM, right? So this configuration you can find in the configuration, reconciliation and precedence rule set precedent exception, right? So you have uh, this is newly introduced in new version where you have standard data set rules and uh, uh, precedent set separately configured in previous version. It was a single thing, right? So for example here, so if you are updating basically standard rule, you will update it here or 
for simplifying it, I'm just showing everything together here in the custom tab because I had updated that values here as well. Uh, the same values are for the standard because I was using the standard rule, right? So you have this precedence association set. It is a precedence association set is basically a container, right? A container to your all your data sets related uh, precedence values, right? So you basically uh, define each data set in this which will compete with each other during uh, reconciliation merge, right? So you know that the sandbox is part of that. Uh, you know that a set was part of it, existing data, SCCM was part of it, and ADDM was part of it, right? So you want to basically uh, see uh, that, for example, a set sandbox, right? So a set sandbox, uh, what I did is like for owner name, I have given a uh, value as a 900, right? So this is your data set name rule for the data set uh, for which class and for which attributes, right? So it's saying all classes, all attributes, it has a precedence value as 700, right? Uh, if I compare it with asset, for example, right? So asset has all classes, all attributes as a hundred. So when the data will come from sandbox, so it will have the precedence value higher than your BMC asset. Right, so it's always going to create that record. So all attributes at 700, and one attribute from computer system class owner name, I had given it the higher 900 as a precedence value. Right, if I compare it with, for example, SCCM, right, so I had given SCCM all classes and all attributes value as a 800. That means I want, I have given a higher value than asset sandbox. Whatever is in asset sandbox. Uh, BMC SCCM should have higher value for all the fields, right? But except one field, which is this 900, right? So this is how you will basically configure each data set. So uh, for sim simplifying, uh, simplifying or explaining, I use this. But since we were using standard jobs, right? Standard rules. So each data set has this precedence values. For example, in the ADDM, right? I had configured computer system class. And I had given the CI tag as a highest value, right? 900. So more than the uh, sandbox data, right? It has uh, basically picked that. And uh, so if you, uh, so this for the CI tag, it is higher uh, value than both the data set. For example, uh, sandbox, right? So sandbox has all attribute as uh, 100 and some attributes as a higher values. And same way, um, CI data, right? So CI data has 800 for all the values. So CI tag is basically has a higher value for that particular attribute, right? So for standard, you will use this standard. So if you have the customs, you will use this one press, uh, custom and it is recommended. For example, all your job can use this one uh, precedence association where all those data set need to compete, compete with each other. So those should be part of single uh, precedence uh, uh, association set basically. So based on this precedence, wherever there is a higher value, it's going to pick uh, that attribute from that particular data set. So based on these precedence sets, it has decided this, right? In my asset sandbox, it has picked the owner name uh, from sandbox and other values according to these uh, data sets, right? So going back to the presentation again, so that was a quick demo about uh, reconciliation, a uh, uh, troubleshooting, for example, right? So the new CMDB UI itself is uh, very capable of uh, helping you with the problems that it has, right? For example, uh, we we had seen right uh, in the uh, normalization, for example, here, right? In the normalization, you were able to see that one CI failed, and it shows you. What is the description for that error and uh, what is the recommended action? Same way it will show you for the reconciliation as well. Like uh, if this uh, in particular run, how many CIs were successful, how many failed CIs, right? So those will come under this link. Uh, if there is failure in the relationship as well, that will come under uh, this particular thing. But uh, in actual environment, right? Custom environment, so this entry scan goes into thousands, right? So it will be difficult to Specifically, so the customer has said, right, I have a one particular CI uh, which is not merged, right? I'm not seeing it in the BMC asset. So you have, uh, you can basically uh, go to this backend form. 
mdb colon job run info right so here you can uh, search for uh, search for the ci based on its instance id right um, so here right so for i think normalization we were seeing that one error right so you can search i'm just searching it based on model name you can search if you have the instance id or if you know the ci uh, you can search the ci instance id from the core, core form base element and then accordingly you can search it here uh, so it had failed for this particular ci right that normalization so if it fails then it gives you the same detail basically here as well so error description what was the error why it failed in terms of reconciliation you might see that the ci reconciliation merge status has failed because there are duplicates in the target or there are duplicates in your source data set and it cannot allocate uh, a same recon id to two cis or if it has find two duplicates in bmc asset already right in that case it is it can say that it is not able to identify um, which recon id to use to allocate to your source data set so accordingly it will give you uh, different uh, errors here and some recommendation re recommended action uh, as well right uh, but if this information is not sufficient or if the ci is not appearing here uh, you don't see an error uh, it still it is not much you may want to uh, change uh, uh, gather the logs basically right so to by default those job runs into the error state if you want uh, to run them in the debug mode basically you can come here in the core configuration uh, for normalization uh, plugin configuration and if it's a bad job you can set it uh, uh, in the batch configuration here if it's a continuous job you can set the log level here it, with different uh, names it generates as per the job type right uh, same way for reconciliation um, here you uh, you can give the path or you can use the path which is available and you can change the log levels uh, from error to debug or anything from here you can change the log size as well and when you run it will generate those file in at this particular location right and uh, to identify right you you will have let's say hundreds of runs uh, for the particular job right for example here there are 10 job runs for this so you can click on this run history uh, you can click on that particular job run right so it will show you this is a progress bar uh, right so after completion it has progress one ci uh, identified one ci and it has merged one ci if there are failure it will show in the red how many ci's are failed right so if you go to the events and if you scroll down it will give you an exact file name uh, which was generated for that particular run so you may have different runs going but you can uh, easily uh, figure out which log file to generate so it's uh, dynamically gen add the, those numbers based on the runs so for different runs that log file would be uh, different here right so those logs you can gather from the server and uh, uh, check further in some cases we might need to enable them along with your uh, ar side logs to investigate some problems if there are workflow failures uh, that is causing this uh, but uh, as we have already crossed this time so we will uh, uh, try to conclude this session now uh, for now but uh, the feature right one part we have not yet seen in detail right? we, we check the theory right for uh, normalization features but we may uh, cover it in a very detail in our uh, next session uh, where we will also cover the troubleshooting part um, so the uh, advanced features of normalization there are some recommendations for reconciliation as well uh, uh, for example when we use the job right so it has different merge orders right related CIs in separate transaction related CIs in one transaction uh, by class in separate transaction so these are merge algorithm different algorithm that we use so these are some advanced internal uh, um, checks that you can do uh, that will help you fine-tune your uh, remedy uh, CMDB or, or performance related issues so such issues we can uh, cover uh, in our uh, next session so let's consider this as a prerequisite session for one of uh, our next uh, some advanced sessions right uh, for now okay. maybe yeah for now we can say that we have provided this troubleshooting guides uh, it just lists some common issues uh, that we identify with the uh, cmdb